Hello, dear ones, it's Alice. Um, I thought I'd talk a little about a topic I've been hearing for years now on the psychic plane. I don't have any personal experience of it, but I think it might be helpful for, for some readers, for some listeners to hear this, at least my thoughts on the topic, which I think are uh, only part of a large number of points of view on this topic. So, as I said before in the last uh, blog, what am I here for on earth but to flat my feet on the ground and to be myself and express myself? So especially here in America where freedom of speech is the basis of this nation. So, so I feel comfortable to talk to you and I understand completely that you may have a, a very different point of view. And the topic in this blog has to do with with HIV and being at risk for HIV. Um, I was doing some research because I keep hearing on the internet about this. I was doing some research with the Centers for Disease Control on the topic of HIV and longevity. And I found out that people who have uh, that virus, um, if they are treated for it with the most modern medical techniques, uh, ongoing, that they have a life expectancy well into their 70s. So uh, the point that they made about that at the CDC was that um, treatment has advanced to such an extent with regard to that virus that um, people who pursue uh, the recommended medical regimen uh, carefully uh, can expect to live very fruitful lives and uh, and that's a good thing especially since I was alive back in the 80s when things were very difficult for people who contracted that virus I remember those times and the tragedies of those times the terrible tragedies so but anyway I, I thought I'd talk a little about um, HIV you can look up the CDC uh, to find out the risk factors for, for, for getting HIV. But most likely, if you pursue a polyamorous lifestyle, and that means that you, that you make love to many different sexual partners, or a number of them, uh, that that is one factor for that that places you at some risk for, for um, what do you call it, for uh, getting the HIV virus. And so, and there are other risk factors, of course. Um, I just wanted to point out uh, uh, what seems to be, from the astral plane, a difficulty uh, for people that, that are sex workers, that that's their, their career. Um, they are at risk, I think, to, to get HIV. And so, uh, the financial like value of their services decreases dramatically, I, as I understand it from the astral plane, when they contract the HIV virus, if they let that be known to their potential customers. So there is that uh, economic factor with regard to revealing uh, the possibility of uh, contracting this virus if you're, if you're the customer, potentially. Then in addition, uh, the situation in which sex workers find themselves, it seems, quite often, is one of, uh, you know, drug use, quite frequently alcohol use, uh, where the customer is their, their desire body has more, is more active and their, um, their logical thought processes are dumbed out, you might say, or or anesthetized to the point where uh, if the customer has a, their, their desire is aroused by, by the sex worker's presence, and if they ask, then ask the sex worker if, uh, if they have the HIV virus, if the sex worker were to say, yes, I do, then their life might be threatened because, because of the inebriated condition of the potential customer, you see. So, so there are two very strong incentives for a sex worker not to admit uh, uh, 
that they have contracted HIV or hepatitis or any number of other sexually transmitted diseases uh, when asked by a customer. The first is economic and the second is the, the threat to their own life. So, so I understand uh, the difficulties here. There are probably many other difficulties. Such as the need for constant medical treatment for the sex worker, and the, so the, there might be a desperate need for money. Um, although it could be that Obamacare would help with that, I don't know. Um, so, so there is this a situation where people who don't have a HIV um, engage in at-risk. Um, sexual activities, life activities, such as soliciting the, um, the soliciting from sex workers or and like that, and then ask this question and unreasonably expect to get a, a straight answer about it, you know. And yet, if the sex worker doesn't answer clearly, then, um, then I think the legal, like the legal issue, is squarely on the side of the customer. Now, uh, in this environment, at least from what I hear in the astral plane, there are doctors who understand the situation, or perhaps even in the situation of being at risk for HIV, in their own uh, like life practices, and who will issue a clean bill of health to sex workers. And so, and it seems to me quite likely that sex workers would know who these doctors are through word of mouth with others who are in the same occupation. So uh, I just wanted to, to offer you all my, um, like my take on what is happening with the spread of HIV. I think 50,000 more cases uh, every year in the United States and uh, the prospects for longevity and, uh, and to, to help everyone to understand why it is that, that in addition to the, the big problem of societal censure for having uh, these sexually transmitted diseases including hepatitis, which is a big one. Um, you know, in South America, as I understand it, where there's not a lot of uh, Western medical care, I think almost everyone has hepatitis in one form or another. I think there are three forms of hepatitis. And hepatitis is just as life-threatening as, uh, as AIDS, maybe, maybe more so to people that aren't haven't uh, built up an immunity to it as a culture. I think in South America, because there's not that much treatment, that the people who have survived uh, getting it are, are more resistant to dying from it than the people in the United States. That's just a guess. Um, so, so anyway, I, you know, it's a very complex issue. Uh, partly because the um, soliciting the uh, favors of a, of a sex worker are con are considered are socially censored, sure, you know, and 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 partly because it falls on the sex worker. The whole thing, the the onus of the legal issue falls on the sex worker, and so. It seems that the, the customer, the potential customer, always seems to get off scot-free, you know? And yet, everyone should know that, that, that this behavior is, uh, is risky. You know, it's risky from that point of view in the world today. So, I, I'm just putting out a special plea for, for people who, uh, young people who may not know about this, who may not understand uh, uh, understand all this, and for young mothers and for pregnant women, especially who find themselves with a with a husband who um, who uh, 
sometimes sometimes prefers men and sometimes prefers women a person of, of, of by lifestyle to understand the extent to which your children's futures will be affected by your risk-taking behavior today even if a sex worker tells you that um, that they have a clean bill of health you know so it's a community issue it's a um, An epidemic mitigation issue I think and it's especially an issue for for young people who may not com completely have the the biological facts and the facts about medical treatment and, and, and detection so you probably won't hear from me on this topic again <laughs> I don't have a lot of thoughts but those are my thoughts <laughs> of course this blog and the next one, the one uh, on the article by Leonard Apt, MD, years ago, these articles don't really affect me because I've been uh, living a celibate lifestyle and a meditative, what you might call, uh, nunnish lifestyle for several decades now. But the funny thing about living a very meditative life, almost a Zen-like life of service to others and introspection and spiritual reading and uh, learning from spiritual counseling. That kind of lifestyle points out in, in very uh, bold relief the suffering of other people, particularly people around me in my own community. And so I thought it would be a good idea to do what I could to, to ameliorate that suffering and to lift people up through what I've, what I've found out to be people's concerns on the astral plane. So that's my intention, is to uplift and heal humanity especially spiritually, but also, of course, physically. Because who can, who can um, deeply study the spiritual path or deeply pursue it unless their basic needs on earth are met? The need to have plenty to eat, the need to have shelter, uh, a good livelihood, and work that we love, and a need for physical health. These are all very important. They're the foundation that must be in place before anyone can pursue a spiritual life, I feel. So that's my hope. That's my hope is for greater community health, for, for the happiness of everyone in my community and throughout the world. God bless you all.